everyone, and welcome to our team building exercise, where we create a hero team using the Sentinel Comics role-playing game. We have a decision to make at the end of this episode, so stay tuned for that. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and get started with creating our hero. I believe we still have our theme of cryptozoology. So we have our Mothman, we have our Yeti, we have our Monster Hunter. So let's see what we create today. Yes? We've got three and seven. So we've got struggling, academic, and then seven, eight, nine, ten. So military. So we already have a military man. So that leaves us with academic, which we already have also, and struggling. I don't know if... Well, struggling could mean a lot of different things. It doesn't have to be financially struggling. So, yeah, let's go with struggling. I don't want to burn our reroll just yet. Especially when we don't know quite what we're going to make. Also, I like the idea that, like, chupacabras of different sorts are just, like, a running gag in, a, in this comic. Where it's like, oh, well, what went missing? Oh, chupacabra ate it. Anyway, struggling. We get a D8 and 2D6 to 3 qualities. So, D8, D6, D6. We get banter, criminal underworld info, and a physical quality, which could be acrobatics, close combat, finesse, fitness, range combat, and stealth. Maybe this is a chupacabra? And they're just like a pack rat, so they kind of just scurry about in the shadows like cockroaches. Yeah, I like that. So, okay. Banter for sure. We'll put banter at a d6. I guess we could give him finesse and stealth. Stealth is going to be our d8. And finesse at d6. Yes, okay. We get a responsibility principle. So, principle of responsibility. And we get a D8, a D8, and a D6 for our power source selection. So I'll meet you down at power sources. So here we are at power sources. What gave our Chupacabra his powers? And I'm thinking whatever gave him his powers gave him sentience. So that way he's more than just a rodent or a pest. We've got doubles. We've got two, two, and five. So that would be training, mystical, five, six, seven would be relic and four would be experimental so training experimentation mystical and relic let's go with mystical because mystical for our grab bag of of monsters makes a lot of sense for a lot of different reasons so I will meet you down at mystical okay and we're here at mystical our magic training or alteration by magic gives us our powers, and in this case, sentience. So we're more than just a pest. I still like the idea that chupacabras are just a running gag in this comic, and this character happens to be a chupacabra that gains sentience. So we get two d8s, d8, d8, and a d6. So we've got awareness, flight, presence. Signature weaponry, teleportation, cold, cosmic electricity, fire, infernal, nuclear, radiant, sonic, and weather. I like the idea that chupacabras are very, what's the word I'm looking for, elemental. And this particular chupacabra is the Eevee, or excuse me, Shmeevee of different chupacabras. It's not evolved, it evolved mentally, but it evolved uh, elementally. Materials, uh, metals, plants, stone, toxic, and transmutation. Transmutation might make sense that it taps into its internal ability to manipulate into different elements, but I don't see it changing other things. Psychic powers, so that would be animal control, illusions, precognition, postcognition, remote viewing, suggestion, telekinesis, and telepathy. And self-control power, so that'd be absorption, density control, duplication, elasticity, intangibility, invisibility, 
part detachment, shape shifting, and size changing. For sure we're gonna get awareness. They are very wiry, looking all over the place little buggers. I don't see presence at all. Like, I see the opposite of presence. If I could take a flaw, that would be what I would take. What kind of elemental chupacabra is he, if any? We already have someone who's cold, so probably not cold. Electrical, fire, infernal, nuclear, radiant, sonic, weather, metal, plants, stone. T it could be a stone chupacabra. Like an earth chupacabra. Where he can, like, bury into the ground. I like that. So, stone at a D8. And do we get a mobility power? We do not. Also, I've noticed that burrowing and digging is not under mobility. We'll say that it is part of stone for the sake of our chupacabra. We got a self-control power. So, it could be... It, <laughs> I like the idea that duplication is not actually him duplicating himself. It's just him calling more chupacabras because they're everywhere. I think... You know what? That's what we're going to do. Duplication. And we're just going to make up the excuse that there are just chupacabras everywhere. You don't see them because you're not really looking for them, but they're like rats. So, duplication at D6, awareness, and stone at D8. We get two yellow abilities, each using a different power. So, we got three yellow abilities here, so we pick which one we don't want. Modification wave. Boost or hinder using power and apply that mod against multiple nearby targets. Mystic Redirection. When another hero in yellow or red zone would take damage, you can redirect it to yourself and defend against it by rolling your single power die. I like Mystic Redirection because it kind of makes him sort of the butt monkey of the team. Sever Link. Overcome an environmental challenge using power. Use your max die. Either remove any penalty in the scene or boost equal to your mid die. Let's give him Mystic Redirection using Duplication, where just another Chupacabra gets hit, and Sever Link using Stone to dig around. So, Mystic Redirection, Stone, er, no, no, uh, it was Duplication, and Sever Link. Using stone. We also get an information quality and assign a D8, or excuse me, a D10 to it. So, D10. Information quality. We've got Credible Underworld, Deep Space, History, Magical, Medicine, Otherworldly, Science and Technology. Otherworldly. Because the thing that he does best is keep tabs on all the other supernats. To figure out what's going on. So, otherworldly mythos. Okay. Then we get a d10 and 2d8. So, put that back, take this up. And we roll on the archetype selection. So, I'll meet you down there. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and roll. We got. One, three, and six. So that's Speedster, Physical Powerhouse, <laughs> no, uh, Elemental Manipulator, which kind of, oh no, that's nine, excuse me, Close Quarters Combat is six. Six plus three is nine, so that's Elemental Manipulator, which kind of makes sense because he, it, you know, manipulates different elements with his other Dupacabras. Six plus one is Armored. Six plus three is nine, so what did I miss? Three plus one, that's four, so that's Marksman. So I think either Speedster, where he's a quick little thing, or Elemental Manipulator, where he just summons other Chupacabras of different elements. Let's take a look at Elemental Manipulator, or, or we use Speedster. Let's check Speedster first, then we'll check Elemental Manipulator, and then if I don't like either of those two, I'll reroll. 
Yeah, I looked through them. I'm not a big fan of any of them. So I'm going to re-roll. I'm really hoping for 14 because that's Minion Maker. And him being able to just create a bunch of Chupacabras makes so much more sense than anything else. So, yeah, we're re-rolling. We've got 7, 4, and 4. We got doubles. Uh-oh. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 would be Sorcerer. 7 would be Armored. 4 would be Marksman. 8 would be Flyer. So, Marksman, Flyer, Sorcerer, and what was the other one? It was 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 7, Armored. Okay, so, Marksman, Armored, Marksman, Armored, Flyer, Sorcerer. I don't like any of those either. Marksman, Armored, Flyer, Sorcerer. I guess Sorcerer because he... because it's the one that fits the most. I was really hoping for Minion Maker and I could cheat and just say, oh, well, we got Minion Maker. And I could go with the the constructed method as well, but I like building with the restraints, but of the of the guided method, excuse me, use the constructed method instead of guided. But I like using constructed as a as a restraint. So I guess we'll all meet you at Sorcerer. You know what? Something I've been considering. This character might not even be a proper member of the team. He could be a side character where they meet up with him every once in a while and he gives them information and sometimes helps out but he's not a true member of the team so because he's not a member of the team I think going with the uh, the constructed method is okay so we'll go ahead and give him a minion maker where he just creates a bunch of chupacabras or not creates but he, he calls forth for them Okay, so we assign one or more dice that we rolled at the end of the power source to any of the following powers. Duplication, inventions, part detachment, robotics, elemental or energy, or material powers. Well, we already have duplication. Inventions, part detachment, robotics, those don't make sense. We have stone. We could go with plants or sonic. He just screams really, really loudly for his his other creatures. I like that. Let's go with Sonic. So Sonic, we're going to give Sonic a D8. That leaves us with a D8 and a D10. Any remaining dice to any of the following qualities. So let's see here. Information or mental. For mental, he already has alertness. He could be creative and investigate and have investigation. So yeah, creative investigation. D ten, D eight. Good. Okay. Uh, we get the we get two green abilities. We don't even need to pick. We just get them. We get make minion. Create a minion using power. Reference the minion chart to see what size of minion it is. Choose whether it can attack, defend, boost, hinder, or overcome. It starts at the start of your turn. You can only use this ability in a situation conductive to how you create minions. So in other words, we can call for a minion. So we'll use Sonic because we're screaming out for the minion. And we also get power up. Boost another hero or one of your minions using power. Either use your max die or use your mid die and make the bonus persistent. Oh, you know what? Make minion is duplication. That makes more sense. And power up Sonic. Because he is... In, he is calling forth more minions, so that's duplication. And he is ordering them around, so that's Sonic. We get one of the following yellow abilities. Minion formation. Reduce any damage you take by the number of minions you have. Whenever damage is reduced this way, reduce the size of one of your minions. Rapid deployment. 
Create a minion using power using a min die and reference the minion chart to see what size minion it is. It acts now and at the start of your turns. And upgrade minion. Boost one of your minions using power. You may also upgrade that minion to your up to your max die size, replacing its minion form. I like rapid deployment more than upgrade minion, only because it fits better, because he's just trying to swarm them with more and more and more minions, with more chupacabras. Rapid deployment using power. I guess that's duplication. In addition to the normal list, the following red abilities are available to you when you select red abilities. So we could skip going to the red section to pick from one of these three red ones, which we may as well just pick now. Construction focus. Create two minions using power, one of with your max die and another with your mid die. Choose whether each one can attack, defend, hinder, or overcome. They act on the start of your turn. Oh, I just noticed rapid deployment doesn't have that choose what, what they can do. So rapid deployment gives us an all around minion that can do whatever. Nice. Swarm combat. Attack using power, use your max die plus a bonus equal to the number of minions you have. Well, obviously we're going to take swarm combat. Because that I just said, we're focusing on just overwhelming them with chupacabras. And sacrifice. When you're attacked, redirect the attack to one of your nearby minions. I guess we're getting construction focus and swarm combat. Construction focus using duplication and swarm combat it uses a power do we want to say duplication I guess so duplication we get an expertise principle I don't know why I typed in principal. I do that all the time. Well, not all the time, but a couple times. I uh, there is some notes here on how minions work. I will not bother reading that on this podcast. But if I ever actually cr play as our chupacabra, which he might just be named chupacabra. Chupacabras don't really have names, but this particular chupacabra is useful because he cut. He could be the Chupacabra Alpha. No, he's not that impressive. Anyway, as I was saying, there are notes here for how minions work in game. I'm not going to bother reading them because that is going to be its own thing. And it's like a couple pages long. But for now, just know that we can create Chupacabras using our bonuses. I'm going to scroll on down to our personality, but one thing to note, we might want to switch Sonic and Duplication dice around using our retcon step, so we would have to avoid using the, the retcon step to choose out of our principal section, because otherwise we're stuck with the Duplication at D6 and Sonic at D8, when really it makes more sense for them to be switched around. So, yeah, I will meet you on personality page. So we're here at personality. Rather than rolling, because we're already going with the constructed method, we can just pick. And I think the one that fits the most is impulsive. Out of lone wolf, let's hear, let's read them all. Lone wolf, natural leader, impulsive, mischievous, sarcastic, Distant, stalwart, fast talking, inquisitive, alluring, stoic, nurturing, analytical, decisive, jovial, cheerful, naive, apathetic, jaded, and arrogant. The it's either impulsive or mischievous, and I think mischievous fits the other chupacabras more than him. He is more impulsive than mischievous. So impulsive. We Make up a quality based on our backstory and assign D8 to it. So, D8. What should our quality be? We could put him down as obnoxious because he's useful in some situations, 
but he's not a full-on hero. He's a side character. And he's kind of obnoxious to the real heroes. So, yes, obnoxious. We upgrade one of our power or quality dice by one step. Oh, okay. So, six, seven, eight. So, we upgrade our duplication from a D6 to a D8. We don't have to worry about switching our duplication sonic dice around anymore because we just upgraded duplication. So, that's good. We get an out ability. Out ability. The hero that goes directly after you may take one damage to reroll their dice pool. We get a D6, D6, D8 for our status. D6. D6 and D8. We would normally pick our red abilities now, but we already picked from the Minion Maker red abilities, so we don't have to do that anymore. So we just go skip on over to our Principles page. I will meet you there. So we're here at Expertise Principles. I want to say right now, if we don't find one in Expertise or Responsibility that we need, I think we're going to pick outside of our principles, obviously, and specifically we're going to pick principle of fauna, that's the principle of like other animals, because principle of chupacabras. But for now, let's see what we got in expertise. We got clockwork, the gearhead, history, indestructible, the lab, mastery, the mentor, the powerless, ooh, I like the, the powerless. You value training and hard work over enhanced abilities. You understand how to get things done without powers and how to exploit flaws in powered individuals. I like the powerless. What else we got though? Science, speed, stealth, strength, the tactician, and whispers. So I guess we are going to go with the powerless because even though we have powers, we don't use them as powers. We, and Even our stone, it's more digging. Our sonic's more yelling. Our duplication is just calling out for more for more family members. So really, the way it's flavored, we don't actually have powers. So the principle of the powers powerless makes sense. Okay? I will meet you on responsibility principles, which I think is the next one. If it's not, then I'll skip ahead. I guess I'm skipping ahead responsibility and I also notice on my way scrolling down here principle of savagery which I think fits more than principle of fauna so if we don't find a responsibility one we're picking principle of savagery we've got business the debtor the detective the double agent I don't think any of those the everyman a family the family kind of makes sense but I don't think we're close to our family we just call for them and tell them to do things. The mask, the sidekick, the team, the underworld, obviously not any of those. The veteran and youth. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll back up to Principle of Savagery and we will take that one. And you know what? I'm just gonna type down Principle of Savagery and I'm going to meet you guys after I type everything up because that is our character. We just need to type all the details in. So. I'll see you guys after that. All right, so we've created our side character, our Chupacabra. We, for sure next time, next episode we'll create another member of the team. The big decision that we should make though, is if this is a four man team or a five man team. And I think we will make that decision final next episode but comment below if you think that we need an another one or two supernats for our full-on cryptozoology team but for now i think that's it for this episode i'll see you guys next time take care